don't get me wrong. Let me just state for the record that I'm all for AI. And as you know, I've rolled out to every engineer in Endor Labs cursor. Here's the thing that we're finding though. And in fact, I'll quote a CTO of a large fintech company in the UK who told me, if I could have it my way, I would give every senior engineer in my company a coding assistant, um, but I would not do that for my junior engineers. So here's a problem that you were, I think, trying to get at, which is when people know what they're doing and they can supervise and it can be a co-pilot, not to be mistaken with autonomous coding, then you can really supercharge productivity by 30, 40, 50% for senior people that know what they're doing. When you give this to junior engineers, kind of your risk is kind of blind leading the blind. And so you've got all this massive amounts of code being generated by these coding assistants, being overseen by people that don't know what they're doing. And now you end up with the seniors having to waste time to kind of go refactor that code, review it, give tons of comments. In fact, just this morning, I was releasing a study where they did research with some of the most popular open source project maintainers, and they gave them all these modern coding assistants. Before they started the experiment, they asked and surveyed like how much productivity enhancement they think they would have. People pegged it at 24% was the average that people thought they would get in productivity gains. And guess what? At the end of the study, it turns out they were slower by 1% call it even, Steven. And so what happened here, right? You can write code much faster, maintainability, the scalability, the quality, the security of that code isn't at par. And then you fundamentally ask the question, like what is AI going to get better at near term? And what are the things it can't near term get better at because of just how it's built? The thing that certainly it can't get better at over near term is security. And so why is that? Well, all of these coding assistants are trained on open source software. It's all unlabeled data. They have learned the good, they have learned the bad, they have learned the ugly. So how do I undo that? And how do I go bring label data so now all of a sudden AI tools are generating secure code by default? It doesn't work that way. And so what a lot of studies are finding is if you use coding assistants with humans that know what they're doing and with the right context and guardrails, so example being for security, giving it the right context and identifying for the co-pilots when they're generating insecure code, giving them that feedback instantaneously, giving them direction on how to rewrite it, how to fix the vulnerability. They're capable of doing it if you give them the right context. That's essentially what the studies are showing. So fast forward, essentially the people that have studied this for a while in the enterprise and thinking about how to have the right rollout strategy, it's about have the people that actually are trained software engineers. It's very dangerous in the hands of Vibe coders like you run if you're shipping production software. So I forbid you from ever shipping production software without, of course, all our guardrails. Then maybe we can have a conversation. But then you've got to put the right context. Now, one of the best ways to bring that context in is MCP servers, right? It gives you an ability to bring third-party context the security expert into the coding assistant and the ID, bringing in the quality controls in there, the architectural kind of um, oversight in there. And so I think MCP is a fantastic way to think about putting enterprise guardrails into your favorite coding assistant.